One of the powerful things you can do with DataShop is uh, analyze learning curves and use that to improve your understanding of you know, basically what's tripping students up, where are they having difficulties, and uh, how can I build a better student model to better optimize their learning experience. So to, to show you about that, let me first uh, log in to uh, DataShop here because I'm at Carnegie Mellon. I can click this uh, Carnegie Mellon login here. And I guess because I logged in a second ago, it's going to pop me right in here in a second, sure enough. Yeah, and I'm going to pick this uh, recommended data set uh, geometry area here. And this gives me some summary of this data set we collected a number of years ago. I'm going to click on learning curve here and go to the learning curve and click on all data so we can see that learning curve. And the first thing I'm going to do actually is pick one of these we call knowledge component models. Um, there's one here called geometry. And what we're seeing here is a learning curve of the data of student performances in a, in a tutor about geometry area. And uh, what I'm going to describe uh, to you is uh, um, about uh, student interactions in this tutor for which there's a screenshot right here and students are solving problems you know, by reading this problem scenario over here and filling in this worksheet sheet. Um, this, this particular problem has students figuring out what's left over in this metal square after I cut out this circular can and they're given information like about the radius of the can four inches which they fill in here and the side of the square eight inches which they fill in here and then they have to figure out the area of the scrap metal and fill it in here. And they might, um, in order to do that, first add some columns here, which they can do in that worksheet menu for area of square and area of the end of the can. Figure those out, right? That's 8 squared. And the area of the end of the can, that'd be pi times 4 squared to get that. And then subtract these two guys to get that, right? Um, and they do that for three questions. So that's a typical problem. So a problem here involves multiple steps filling in these cells. And each of these steps can involve different kinds of skills. And what we described in this paper here, uh, which you can find uh, with this reference, is a method for discovering a better model of student skills, or what we like to call knowledge components. So let me go back to data shop and illustrate how you can do that. You can use do that using learning curve data. And what I have here is uh, data from students working with this very tutor where they get opportunities to uh, do steps in that tutor. And each one of these data points is an average across all uh, 59 students who worked in this tutor um, for this data set. And what their error rate was on the first opportunity to do one of those steps uh, in the second opportunity. And uh, the red is the data. The blue here is here. The blue line is the predicted value. So I'm going to get rid of that for a second so we just see the data. And one strange thing you'll, you might notice here is that as students are practicing, the error rate isn't going down. Uh, they seem to be... Uh, you know, having errors all over the place. Maybe locally it's going on down, but then it blips up. So here, we are, the model of knowledge we have here is, is is if there's only one skill, geometry, and so we're only looking to see if they get better as if they're going to get better f no matter what kind of geometry uh, area problem they do. And as a matter of fact, if we were to go in and look into some detail here, we can use this thing called the point tool to see what kinds of problems they were doing before that blip in the error rate and what kind of problem they did afterwards, we might notice here. Huh? So um, different students were doing different problems at this point, but most of them were doing this painting the wall problem, which involves uh, rectangle, figuring out some rectangle areas. Uh, and then that's painting the wall, that's painting the wall. See, we're at this uh, opportunity 27. And here's a big blip and a big 50% error rate here, 48% errors. And that's for a problem with trapezoid area. So, yeah, of course, the error rate's going to go up when you change skills. 
But here's the question. What makes a skill a skill? Um, so I'm going to pick uh, a knowledge component model. Knowledge components are uh, uh, same kind of idea, skills, concepts and skills are knowledge components. So the original model in this tutor made uh, many more fine-grained distinctions. There were 15 different skills and this exact same data now is being displayed. But now what we're averaging is not only across all the students first opportunity but all the students over all their skill first opportunities and this is their second opportunity averaged across all students and all skills and now we get a learning curve um, so that's neat but that learning curve isn't necessarily um, looking good for all the skills and if we scroll down in data shop we can see what the learning curves for individual skills or knowledge components it's look like five so here is the area uh, skill and that one looks pretty decent the error rate is going down over time uh, one of the things you might notice in these skill in these uh, things I'm going to hide that point if in info in these curves the number of students uh, doing say 28 uh, opportunities of circle area is diminishing there's only four such students so sometimes the air the, the it gets a little noisy out here like circle circumference is another purported skill here when we bring that up into this diagram, maybe it's going down. It's kind of erratic out here, but that's really a function of having uh, too few observations. So generally error rate going down, probably uh, here's one. This looks like it's going down, going down, going down. And it kind of starts low right from the start. Here's one's going down. Uh, most of them look like they're going down and overall we see if you average across all of them, the error rate is going down. But some of these curves look particularly flat, like this one, composed by addition. Now, composed by addition is what we labeled uh, any step in a problem where students were combining areas. So going back to this image, uh, this was a situation like this. The area of the scrap metal involves composing two different areas uh, um, and you can some some of these problems you multiply a number of pieces here it's uh, adding or subtracting we, you know, we, we're, we're composing so we call that composing by addition sometimes it's adding sometimes it's subtracting this error rate is kind of like the original one blipping all around so what's going on again we could use the point tool to try to figure out what's going on like trying to say well what's different about what we students were doing here that's a problem called where there's a step here called scrap metal area that they're working on in a problem called POGS. We can go look at that problem. Actually, that's the very problem we were just talking about. And contrast it, say, with uh, what's going on in a problem like TROGS here um, or a problem like painting the wall here um, or a problem like building a sidewalk. Those problems, as it turns out, um, have different characteristics. So the learning curve here cues us into that possibility that there may be different characteristics of some of these problems. Um, another way we can get a clue that there's something wrong is looking at this performance profiler. And here, I, again, I can use data shops uh, visualization tools to help me zero in on that composed by addition. So I'm going to deselect all knowledge components but this composed by addition one. And then um, here are the error rates on the various problems so uh, that are involved. And so trogs and building a sidewalk are easier. And uh, this is showing uh, the three six easiest and the six hardest. I'm going to make sure that we can see them all by showing the 10 hardest uh, as well. Uh, so POGS is pretty hard. Some of these other ones are, are much harder. But this is the problem level error rate. What we really want is this step at which um, the uh, uh, composed by addition skill occurs. And actually, there's more than one step per problem in some of these cases. So we got to make this bigger. Let's just make that 26 so we get the hardest and the easiest ones. Um, 
And now we can see that there is really a huge variety in error rate. What's the difference between these hard problems or the easy ones? And what a researcher has to do at that point is go in and take a look uh, to see how are the harder problems possibly different than the easier ones. And uh, uh, give away the story, it turns out some of these problems, we gave these columns uh, in other ones we uh, like this one, this, these columns uh, weren't there, so we were scaffolding in some of the problems that makes them easier than the others. Um, so, key idea here is those blips in the learning curve here that we saw earlier, those flat-ish learning curves provide us a clue that we can improve the model by making finer grain distinctions. You do so uh, by um, using this KC models page and you can refer to another video which will show you how to modify a KC model and see if it better fits your data.